Yeah, and I see mm. uh, a question from Godfish. He said, PT has its own AI. Everyone can use it. It's simple, but it's working. Um, and yeah, I have seen it, uh, and it, it is really cool. I actually, Jarvi showed me uh, uh, it, a... Um, he, he showed me kind of like the prototype before it was released to production uh, when I saw him in Vegas, um, when Mitch and I went for the, um, for that one, uh, I'm forgetting the name, started with a B, I think. Breathe, Revo? breathe, uh, the oh, breathe great. conference. Um, yep. So yeah, when, when Mitch and I were there, uh, Jarvie showed me a, a kind of prototype of what they were doing. Um, so, you know, it's really cool. Like what they've done is actually really cool too. Uh, but we're, we're, we're building something completely different. Um, so, you know, what we've built is a localized AI that's trained on Hive data. Uh, what they've built is basically a plugin for ChatGPT. So, uh, you know, if you use Peak D, if you use AI on Peak D, what you're actually doing is it's just giving prompts to, uh, to a, ge a generalized AI, um, which is still really cool and useful. I've used it a couple of times and, and I think it's really cool. Um, but what we're building is something where you can say, like, analyze the all the blog posts I've ever made on on Hive and, uh, you know, tell me, you know, which blog posts tend to earn the most rewards or which blog posts tend to get the most comments. Uh, you know, find me five bullet points where you can uh, kind of create like a Venn diagram of, of you know, which which blog posts I should create in the future that would perform the best based on my history. Um, so that is the power of, and that's obviously one use case, but that is the power of a localized AI, uh, where it's trained on all your hive data, you know, anywhere from comments, blog posts, threads, uh, you know, upvotes, um, really everything, um, images you've uploaded. Like, I mean, you could literally say, cause it, cause it can read the URLs of the images you've uploaded in the past, uh, you know, regardless of what UI it was posted on. Um, and it can read all the image. You could say, analyze all the images I've ever posted and then create me a new image uh, for my next blog post based on those. So it'll take like your style of images and then create a new one. Um, so that's the power of, of a localized AI, which, which is very different than like an AI plugin. Um, you know, I would say it's kind of like, what would be a good example? It's kind of like a, you know, a browser extension versus like a, an app built from scratch. Um, so... It is it is very different, but uh, that's not to downplay what they've done. I, I do think it's it's cool uh, what they've done, and they obviously delivered it um, almost a year ago, I think, at this point. So yeah, it's pretty cool, and just like like we have said in the past, it's pretty good to see a lot of innovation coming from different high projects because in the end, if one of them explodes and gets adoption as hell, like it's good for the ecosystem. So yeah, it's pretty cool to see PICD. Having their own AI and probably I'm I'm I wouldn't be surprised if we if we see different iterations of AI with other front ends. I mean, hopefully we will. So, yeah, well, and I I think there's going to be you know, and I know that a lot of people like to pit UIs and projects on Hive against each other, which I do think is kind of ridiculous. But people just love you know like people love like drama. That's you know drama sells. Um, but you know they're they're it's like Eric said, like the rising tide raises all ships. Like there's no, the, the real competition is, is out there. It's external. Um, so all of us building on, on hive are really building in a way that is beneficial to each other. So if, if Leo's, you know, and, and we'll get to mouse and, and marketing later, but if Leo's heavily focused on growth and onboarding new people to in Leo, each of those people has an, like, once they're onboarded, they now have a hive account where they now can discover the rest of the ecosystem. Um, so we're, we're just trying to be a portal for them to start getting involved on the blockchain, start doing easy things that they're already familiar with, because our UI is obviously very similar to X. So they're, you know, they look at it and they know exactly what they need to do, uh, as soon as they sign up, that's kind of been our whole goal for the last, you know, several years now, um, is to get to where we are now in terms of, in terms of ease of use. Um, and each onboarded Mao that we have is a, you know, it's a, it's a monthly active user for the entire Hive blockchain immediately. And then it's also a potential user for all the other Hive apps that are out there. So, so I do find that people try to pit UIs against each other and it's, it's kind of a ridiculous thing. And like I said, you know, me and Jarvie, we're, we're chopping it up in Vegas and there's people love to say that there's like bad blood between Inleo and other projects, but there never has been. Um, and, uh, I forgot where I was going with that in terms of, oh yeah. And 
in terms of uh, what Eric said with the different iterations of AI, I think what's going to be interesting is, you know, it, it's getting easier and easier to implement AI. Uh, I'm starting to see a lot more uh, tooling get built uh, and the space is rapidly evolving. So I do think it's, it's likely to happen that other uh, UIs on Hive are going to implement their own AI um, and, you know, not just a plugin, but like their actual, like a, a trained AI for specific data, you know, with their own custom vector space. Um, I do think that that's going to happen in the future. But I also think it's going to be interesting to see, um, you know, I, I think Leo is going to be first to market in terms of like a localized, uh, specialized AI. Um, and then we're, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out a financial model that makes sense to open up that API to all the UIs. And, you know, once they have that API, they, they can run with it in any direction they want. Um, so if you really think about it, like there's a lot of apps out there now that use ChatGPT on the back end, um, but they've built like a totally custom you know, thing with it. So like some, I, I've seen projects where like it's a website builder and, but it's powered by ChatGPT on the back end. So they're basically using OpenAI's APIs, um, but they're, they've built on top of that, they've built a website builder. Um, so their UI and their back end is specifically a website builder, um, but it's tapping into that OpenAI API. So you can imagine that there's, there's, you know, limitless things that other Hive UIs could potentially do once they tap into our API, which is basically going to be a chat GPT bot that is trained on all the Hive data. So, you know, let's say that um, like someone's got a game, like simple games in the audience. Uh, and let's say that he wants to tap into uh, Leo AI and, and you know, use it inside the game, um, you know, for, for various features of, of anything he could really dream up. Um, you know, that's going to be a completely different use case than what Leo AI is doing on, on InLeo. So, uh, you know, the, the possibilities of it are, are truly endless, um, you know, once it's out in the world and, and that's why the AI segment, you know, it's kind of like the internet revolution or the mobile revolution, you know, the AI revolution is, uh, you know, it's evolving so exponentially, um, quickly because of, you know, it being AI itself is like the evolution of it is just so fast. The iterations are so fast. So uh, I think people are going to really take what we've built and, and start running with it. Um, you know, whether it's suggesting things to us to do on InLeo or, you know, us opening the APIs for other Hive projects and saying here, you know, we've built this. Um, obviously, we need to make the financial model make sense so that we don't go broke on, on AI credits. Um, but, you know, then you can just take it and, and do whatever you please with it. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see kind of how that evolves as well.